Okay, let's see if we can do a little one take, unedited, quick little video about rivet guns. And a um, couple of reasons for this. One of them, there's a discussion on the Zenith list going on right now about the best cordless rivet gun, or anybody had experience with the apparently the very high end Stanley cordless gun, which I've got no experience with, and the more common Milwaukee cordless, which seems to be a pretty popular one. Uh, I was digging through my stuff here. Part of the reason I'm doing this also is I'm trying to get motivated on my project again. The weather's getting a little bit nicer. And I'd like to be finishing up my 701 at some point here before I die, I guess, is the bottom line. Anyway, my take on cordless guns is I think they're a neat little tool. I've been going to get a Milwaukee just to try it out, um, make sure the rivet heads can be converted over since I've done couple of videos on converting your own rivet heads to uh, pull the Zenith rivets and um, I haven't done it just because I haven't had the need and I bought into the Milwaukee line of tools but I've got primarily the 18 volt stuff the rivet gun is a 12 volt so I've got to buy into that system um, the best way to get them I guess if you're going Milwaukee is probably on Amazon there in that $230 range um, and I'll put a link to this stuff down below so if, if you want to go take a look at it why it'll be there. The least expensive way I found them is to buy them from uh, Home Depot. Seems to have the best price on them and they're 220 230 something like that. Amazon's right there in that uh, in that same price range. So those are kind of the options there. Me personally I'm not a I, I don't think they're that great a thing. Um, the things that people are saying are, are pros to them is you don't have to have a compressor. Well, in my mind, my workflow revolves around the compressor on just about anything I do, so, and especially in the airplane factory. Um, and I think, to me, that's not a consideration at all. They say you're not dragging around a hose. Well, you get these new lighter hybrid hoses, and it's not a big deal at all. And normally an air tool is going to be lighter than a than a uh, battery-powered tool or a cordless tool. So that's kind of my thinking there. Um, Advantage-wise for the, the corded stuff, you've got inexpensive options. Now I've been through the Harbor Freight guns. They're a piece of crap. You know, I've been through two of those, I think. I won't give you a dime for a Harbor Freight gun. I've settled on these little Nico guns. And uh, you get these on Amazon. They're, well, I just looked. They're $53 and change with free shipping on Prime. Um, I've got two of these guns. I've got this one's a, for pulling A4s. That's the nose piece I've got in it. It's an A4 nose piece. The other one I've got an A5 nose piece and I leave it set up there all the time. Um, the guys are saying to, you know, buy your noses from, from Zenith. And that's a great option. But the thinking is you're going to keep your standard your standard rivet noses, which are kept in the bottom on the Nico, you're going to keep them for other uses. The reality is if you're buying it for your airplane project, that's primarily where you're going to use it. You know, I don't use them hardly any place else. And there was something discussed about the length of the Stanley gun, uh, along with the high price. The uh, length of it's not really going to be an issue, and maybe my needs are different as a scratch builder than somebody that's building off of a kit. because. Uh, you know, there's maybe I've got a little bit more going on than just drilling out and riveting a kit. But you're also going to need a hand riveter. This is a little Marson. I've uh, I've had this one for years, and I've modified this one just for the Zenith. Both sides are ground off on the on the nose itself, and eventually I'll replace it so that I've got a nice shiny new one. And these are only these are I think thirty four dollars something like that. I was looking at them. Uh, Marson offers a full line of those. You're going to have to have at least one hand puller and probably two or three before you're done with your project. Just a, you know, a swivel-headed one and something like this Marson. And this Marson was not ideal because I had to grind the the nose off to get it in a couple of places. So the idea that you're going to be able to do your whole project with a uh, cordless riveter or even an air riveter is is kind of a um, kind of a fallacy. You're going to need a little bit more than just that, but they're inexpensive. But I also like a compressor, or I like compressed air tools, because that's where my workflow revolves. A lot of guys are using battery-powered drills to uh, drill out your holes, or match drill them, or even scratch build and stuff. I don't like a cordless in the respect that it doesn't turn fast enough. You know, you get a better hole with a higher speed. Uh, I don't go for the, the high dollar aircraft drills. I've got, I think, four different drills that are back there that I've dedicated just to the little airplane factory. 
uh, one or two of them are the small lightweight Chicago pneumatic um, high speed drills and I think they turn 15, 1800 RPM, something like that. But I think it gives you a better hole and uh, I can do those for 100 bucks a piece type of thing. They're comparable for a cordless and I don't have to worry about batteries. Um, and I can keep different drill bits in different drills. So that's the way I set up my, my air drills. I've also got a little, uh, it's actually an air screwdriver that I've set up for deburring. So it's it revolves around that air stuff too. I've got a couple of nibblers, a angle drill, I've got a pneumatic squeezer for solid rivets, that type of thing. So um, the reality is before you're done with your project, if you're doing most of your stuff, you're probably going to need an air compressor anyway. You know, some guys don't like that and think they can get by without it, but it's not that big an investment for a decent air compressor that's not tremendously noisy and will do everything you want it to do. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So that's kind of my feelings for why I like compressed air stuff. Um, I think cordless has its place, but I'm not, uh, I'm not really a fan. And there again, the Milwaukee stuff on the 18 volt, at least it's, it's really good stuff. I do like it. I use it for all my cordless stuff. I've got drills and drivers bolts for in the uh, 18 volt stuff. But I also notice when the lithium batteries go dead, they're just dead. You'll be going along and they'll be working fine. And then pretty soon the, the tool doesn't work. So anyway, just you gotta, you're going to have to have battery supply and keep batteries charged and things like that. So just my two cents worth. Hopefully you find something interesting there that you can utilize, make an informed decision. I'll try and link stuff in the description below so you can uh, go and look at these. And there again, hopefully you find it useful. Thanks for taking the time to watch, guys. Enjoy your build.